it's a lie that is being sold to Nigerians that there's life much better than the lives that they are living or their suffering is much worse than anyone's suffering in the whole world. No mistake in God putting you here. I watch this video and I hear, we are proud Nigeria, we are Nigeria in Libya, how? We leave this country and we do well in other countries, but to go through death, I don't think it is the way, I don't think it's that bad, the way we try to claim it. Thanks for staying with us. So there's been a video making the rounds on social media that showed a good number of women in what they say is a holding facility. According to the women, some of them have been in the facility for more than a year. The video shows some of them carrying little children while calling on the Nigerian government to come to their rescue and find a way for them to get out of the facility. They also alleged that other nationalities have found ways and means of leaving the place, but they have decided to remain calm and obey the law so as not to give Nigeria a bad name, however. The chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, Madam Abike Dabiriyerewa, said that um, she was part of a team that went to Libyan prison to rescue over 10,000 Nigerians within Libya with a warning that they should desist from going there. But they still returned. Not, it was not, she's not even sure that the video is a recent video. According to her, 140 people were rescued again just a few days ago by the international um, organization of migration, Nigerian version, and that the multi-agency task force to evacuate into it, will be, they will look into it, but that Libya should be avoided by any irregular migrants, that they have been warned several times. So to join the conversation, you can call us on 810 41679. You can tweet to us or comment on YouTube. We'd like to play the video so people can at least get an idea of what, oh, we, we can't take the video right now, but we'll play the video within the course of the conversation. But we, those online have seen the video. And Nima, when you saw the video, what did you think? You, you have always carried the matter of migrants on your head. But Abike, Mrs. Um, Abike Dabirelewa said, we have warned them not to go to Libya. Leave Libya alone. Now they go there. Yeah, we can't be calling us to come and rescue you. What do you think of our response? You know, and what's your reaction to the video I itself? I saw people commenting and, you know, calling her names. But you just can't do things the same way over, yeah, and over again. Yes. Yes, again. I don't understand. We've been advocating travel rights. Travel rights. But our people still do these uh, met methods. And I remember under the Buhari government, I have three cases where she assisted my people who reached come out back. to me to come back. Full flights paid to return. It's not cheap. One of my, my lecturer's friends from another university was stranded in South Africa. He got there for his PhD and went blind. Madame Abikes Abiri was rich. I did not even call her. I just forwarded his message and thought, okay, let me not call her. Hopefully she'll see it. That man arrived in Nigeria and said, she said, you said my mes sent my message. Thank you. So I know her work. I have experienced it. I see how hard she works. And aside from the rescue, there's advocacy and enlightenment telling people how dangerous it is. You... <laughs> I watched this video, and I hear, we are proud Nigeria, we are, Nigeria in Libya, how? What's the link? What's the connection? One of the guys that we had to assist in Libya was the tenant of one estate I managed. And we had met at a meeting, his friend, I met his friend, and he sent me the guy's details. Do you know how difficult it was to reach that guy in the desert in Libya? They sent number to him, but he can't even call because he was enslaved under a camp. So it took a while. When we were able to send WhatsApp to him, Madame Abike said, we are at this town, it's nearest to him. Tell him to find his way to that camp. Oh, that town, it was a miracle for the guy to get to that town before Nigeria government relief yes. package left that town. Mm. So when we, they speak about it, they talk about their work mm. constantly. If you don't experience it, you think it's a walk in the park. Libya right now is run by two separate governments. Gaddafi is dead. And they don't have a, 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 an organized government like you see in the Western countries, and I'm saying it with emphasis, because there are certain countries that are war on, there are certain countries that, but you chose to pass through those countries. You chose, you cannot, um, there's consensus on your part. You chose to take that part. You've yeah, willing partner willing. and now asking the Nobody is uh, trafficking you. Some people are traveling those, there's a, there's a video of a guy who had been rescued, who came back. Who is on that path again doing videos saying he's going back to Europe through that path. And the, and the government paid for his tickets to come back. To come back. And he's on his way back. He was deported from a country with his entire family. And he's traveling through the desert and making videos online. And he's going. If something were to happen to him, we then sit down and query Nigerian government. It's like asking Nigerian government to continue to uh, spend resources in the river. Mm. I'm not saying human lives don't matter. I'm saying that Nigerians too can migrate. We, our people do migrate legitimately to countries. 
We leave this country and we do well in other countries. But to go through death like that is not, it's, it's, I don't think it is the way. I don't think it's that bad. It's the way we can try to claim it. That, you know, it's bad, it's worse. I must go through death. Ramatu. Yeah, so um, when I saw the video, I was really worried because this is just another burden on our government. Every single time we're always, you know, burdening the government with these kind of issues that we, decisions that we took by ourselves. And clearly, these decisions are risk. There's a high level of risk with these kind of decisions that we usually take. And the goal is that they want to go through, is a gateway from Libya to Europe. And you go through, the, um, to, through that way, and at the end of the day, it doesn't work out. It doesn't happen. And, and then you now start calling on the government to come and rescue. Because all those people that you can see there, it's not like, I, don't, I can't see anybody that is, um, they can't say, fund they can't, the yes, they mean. can't even do anything. I'm sure forward. they just came, somebody just came and told them, come, let's go. And they go through the bushes. It's not like there's a, a, a good way that they go to those countries through. And sometimes through the sea. And this, these are all risky ways of going to places. So the, at least she's even coming out and she's even working very hard to make sure that they all come back and everything. But I'm just wondering how long and for how, you know, how much she's going to continue trying to, you know, solve this particular issue. Because mm. Nigerians will come back, they will still go back, just like what Nima said. Mm. Somebody is still going back again to that place. So okay. I don't, I really so, can't. Maya. Yeah. So for me, I don't want to make this like an advertisement or some sort of for Madam Abike Dabri Erewa. But the truth is that until she became lead compass, this mm. was not a story that was so such a front-facing mm. story for us. You know, she has she has done so much. You know, in bringing awareness of the dangers of traveling through this path, of the sort of hardship, you know, that people go through when they find themselves in places like that. It used to be a time when people would talk about traveling through Libya and getting to Europe, but we did not know the extent of the torture, you know, and dehumanizing way that they were living until, you know, she got into office. And I think that for that, and for all the other rescue operations that she had championed, that woman deserves her flowers. And I, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. Mm -hmm. That this is a woman in her job, in this particular job, I've been proud of. That besides those who um, go through Libya, go to Europe through Libya, there's also been stories of our students in different countries, of our children in different countries, and they have, and she has given support. So please, I think maybe when we don't know the full story of her office, maybe that's why some people can be so, um, ungracious towards her, but I don't think this is a woman that needs that sort of, um, you know, hate or trolling. Now, on the other side is that, for me, I'm concerned, because if you see that video, there are babies in the video, so I'm concerned for children that are born in this situation. And that, for me, is the main issue. What do we do as a country? The truth is, people like this will forever exist in Nigeria whether we like it or not. Nigerians like this will forever exist. We had the opportunity of interviewing a lady who had gone through this means to Dubai. And when we asked her if she had heard about traveling in this way, in this risky way, she said she had never heard. All the stories that she heard were stories of her friends who had made it over there and they were asking her to come so she could make it alongside them. Also, you know, that was the story that she heard. So we still need to do a lot of, you know, advocacy, around. bringing sensitization around it. We need, there are new people that are growing, you know, coming up. Some of these people that were seeing this video, I mean, we're not there 10 years ago. You know, it's a new group and new set of people. Yes, we may have those who are very much aware, but we also have those who, this is their first time. Then secondly, there are people who have made this a business. Mm. Who are exploiting. here in Nigeria and exploiting people, collecting lots of money from these Nigerians, promising them all sorts of lies mm. and sending them, you know, where they know that nothing is going to come out of it. So we need to, this, the, to deal with this is, is quite multifaceted, but a lot of it also depends on Nigerians. We need to also understand that we have to pay repercussions for some of the decisions that we take. If government rescues you and brings you back and you go back, really, what justification do you have to call on government to rescue you again if you have been told several times? So why would you put yourself or your family in danger, anybody, you know, in danger knowing that this is what... Look at these babies. 
These are Nigerian babies just lost in, in camps. Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? There's nothing that bad in Nigeria. There are no camps where, you know, that, that there's no hope for you in your own country. Yeah. Here, you, can, you can't even get a phone call. Can you imagine? You can't even have a phone call. In your country, at least, you, we're all here struggling. There's still hope. There's still someone you can speak to. There's still, in, there's still ventures that you can go into. There's still farming. There's just still something. And you still have your dignity as a Nigerian in your country. I really don't see what the... What the what the need is to travel dangerously through lands. It's about and, hopelessness, Maria. And, and, and which hopelessness is what I don't understand. Why do you feel hopeless? Exactly. So it's about, we, we, I think what that's the real conversation to be had. We need to address why people would feel so hopeless and desperate enough to say, I would rather die in the desert on the way to greener pastures because they cannot find anything green here. And it is by educating people that people that tell you this is how I went and it worked for me are not giving you the entire picture of the statistics of people that die on the way. And also, we're not seeing the option. People would say, if, if, hope, that, why do people commit suicide and jump into different, because they just feel like nothing is working, there's no hope. But when they get counsel and they see that there can be, there's light at the end of the tunnel, they would walk through and they end up finding that light. So we need to have more people more intervention, more education on the fact that there is light. Bad as bad in Nigeria, you can call Nigeria, and there's nowhere you will just dig ground and cultivate, put small, put seed of corn, put tomato, you will, you will harvest. No, no, I think my, my, my small garden in front of my house is giving me, I mean, it, but I leave wants to grow on my head. Why? Is the, is, I don't have to buy the leaf because the leaf is in front of my house and what I leave to is growing there. Well, it, it means every but, Nigerian can it, actually cultivate is something it, to sustain themselves, but they don't see it. Is it hopelessness? Or is it a lie that mm -mm, it's not desperation? Because there are some people that will tell you, I had my business, I was doing my and saloon I business, it. I was earning some money, but I was told that I can make euros, certain, certain amount of euros in one day. Yeah. Is that hopelessness? Is that desperation? It's not. It's that some people have decided to believe a lie that everywhere else is better than Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That there are people living outside Nigeria that all they have to do is wake up and dollars will be falling on their heads. Mm -hmm. Those are the sort of lies that they tell our young ones. They don't, we don't, we are not telling our young ones that everywhere you find yourself is a work process. Hard. You will work, work hard. hard. Even these countries that you're hoping to get to, when you get there, nobody's going to be throwing any money at you. You will find your, you have to go through the process and it's even worse for you that you go yeah, without your, pay, no without your, without your documents. Mm -hmm. You will find yourself in worse situations. So we need, so it's not, that's the thing. When, when we talk about this, um, people make it seem that, oh, you're against the poor, you're against the hopeless, you're against those who cannot make we ends meet. Stories. But the truth is that it's a lie that is being sold mm -hmm. to Nigerians, that there's life much better than the lives that they are living, or their suffering is much worse than anyone's suffering in the whole world. Yeah. All right. Um, final words. Um, okay, so um, I think we need to be proactive somehow. I, okay, for example, now, since they are disturbing, let's say me, I'm the government, and you, are, you keep disturbing me with this kind of problem. What I will do is I will look for a way of blocking that bush part mm -mm. or the sea part awesome. or the people that are, you know, that are enabling this thing by collecting monies from these people and all of that. I will arrest them so that they won't be giving me stress. I'm talking, I'm talking from the point mm -hmm. of the, of the government. Mm -hmm. So that they won't be giving me stress. I will block all those parts. Since the people cannot think for themselves not to engage themselves in such kind of risk, I will help them minimize it by blocking all that part. I'll block the part of the guy that is collecting money from them, block the bush part, the sea part, everywhere. As long as you don't go into a country uh, the right way, you always have issues. That's final words. In final words, words, I'll just tell people to be careful about the third world narrative. Mm. The narrative that it is bad here, you have to get out of here no matter what. I said yesterday that my son had a discussion and was telling me problems is what brings money. Mm. And I have never sat him down to discuss those kind of mentality, but he has it. There's no organ of Baziba. That's what my father says. There's no mistake in God putting you here. And here is not a cost land as you like to think. Wherever you, whatever your mindset is, is what turns to your narrative. Uh. Don't let somebody come and sell you the greener pasture narrative because you get there and you see things happen for some people. You see those people who make successes there? They are success-minded people here. Uh. That's why they could. Uh. But the moment you're cursing here and willing to travel through Libya to any other country, your IFC is something. And to go to some Asian countries, Oman and Co, to work 
Your eye, if you see something, mm. please stop following the third world narrative as if no, it can never be good. There are third world countries that are better and the th things thank, can th work. Thank you so much, ladies. It's been a very, very loaded show with a lot of humanitarian concerns. But um, on a final note, we'll just say once again, our heart goes out to all the people of Maiduguri and Borno State entirely. Um, we pray for wisdom for the leaders there. And we also um, want to say the Nigerians that are feeling hopeless and desperate should not believe the lies even as you are feeling hopeless and desperate, find someone that is successful within your community and find a way to serve them, to learn about how you can better your life. But going illegally into the desert and then being stranded and asking for help is not the way. Um, but yet, would appeal, if this video is true, that the government should forgive them and rescue them. That's what we can take on today's show. Yeah. See you all tomorrow. Bye.